Hello and welcome to our newborn photography safety series brought to you by Stan in Baby. My name is Sandra Moffat and in an effort to make sure that we bring you all the information and facts relating to newborn safety, joining me throughout this series is well-respected neonatal nurse Anne-Marie Fieri, who will be advising us on the essentials to safely working with newborns in a studio environment. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about safety issues with newborn photography. But before we start, I'd like to say that if you are unsure about anything you hear during this series, please seek advice from a medical practitioner near you and get the answers that you need. If you have been given information from other sources, make sure it's a reliable source because the health and well-being of our clients should always be put first. In our studio, we actually like to start with the hands under chin pose. I can put the baby down, I can settle the baby, and I can do some simple movements to achieve that pose without unsettling it. When I put the baby down, I want to put it down while its eyes are still open. I want it to know where it's going down, because if it is to unsettle it all during my process of moving and articulating it and getting it into the poses that I need, it is still in a familiar place. It still knows where I put it down. Before we put the baby down, we actually have a rolled up towel underneath for support. It's actually gonna create a shelf that the baby is gonna lay on. It goes down towards the front. And the other thing that you're gonna need is a nice well in the bottom of the bean bag. The well is really important because it actually prevents the head from going up too high. With babies, you've got to be very mindful of their chin. Um, and we, we speak about their um, chin being in a neutral position. If their chins are too far forward onto their chest, you can obstruct their airway because their necks are so short. But if the babies, if you flex their heads back too far, their tongue can fall back and you can obstruct their airway. So you just have to be very, very mindful of the baby's position of their chin to protect their airway. So the way we do that is by creating the well in the bean bag. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stand up. I'm gonna place um, our standing baby down and um, show you how we settle it. So I generally put my hand across its chest so it has full support as I'm going down. Now, with a real baby, they might move around quite a lot and, and fidget, but generally I want to keep the blanket on them so they're nice and warm, and I want to try and keep both their hands exposed. She is still awake, her eyes are still open, but I want her to settle and feel comfortable in this position. So what I generally do, there is, there's two ways to approach this. You can either just hands off, let her get comfortable in that environment. Let her sit there. If she's starting to stir more, instead of relaxing into the position, she's starting to wriggle more, then I, generally what I do is I'll go in, I'll put one hand on her back, one hand towards her bottom, and I'm not rocking her, I'm not moving her. All I'm doing is I'm offering support and reassurance that I'm still there. So this is a really good um, example for Sandra that she's um, holding the baby and um, she's containing the baby and the baby just feels still quite secure and feels like it's in the wound. It is a good idea not to pat the baby and just let the baby go to sleep on their own just being contained. If your baby is a little bit um, premature, you don't want to be stroking the baby because stroking the baby on their skin is actually quite noxious and the baby's, it's quite painful for them and they don't like it. So you are much better off just containing the baby. Whilst you're containing the baby, you might also want to utilize some white noise. Sandra uses a shusha in her studio. They're a great idea. White noise will put babies to sleep. Um, ideally, you don't want them to be above the noise level of your refrigerator at home. Babies auditory pathways to their brain are still growing. And there is concern that if noise levels are too high, that you can damage um, their hearing. So if you can't follow a normal conversation, the noise levels are too high. Well, I do know that these do go quite loud. So I guess um, maybe don't stick it too close to yeah. the baby and, and sort of mid-level to lower just level. just think about how high your refrigerator is at home, how noisy your fridge is. Well, I guess it's actually quite low, isn't it? Yeah. From here, what, what I'm actually gonna do is I can grab one of the baby's hands and just gently sort of touch it. 
And what that can do is I can tell whether or not my baby has now gone to sleep or whether I need to give it a bit more time to settle. Um, in this case, Sip is perfectly ready to go. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is to achieve the hands under chin pose. What I want to do is I want to get um, both hands evenly under the chin. And to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, my thumb and my finger on the temple of the baby just for support. And then I'm going to grab the second hand and gently bring it under. When I do that, I then want to still keep my hand underneath the baby, but I also want to support its head at the same time. If during that movement you did unsettle the baby, just hold there for a second and let the baby resettle. If the baby has resettled, then you can come in and lift the entire baby up, the hand and the head, and slip the second hand just up and under. At this stage, I've kept the blanket on the baby because if it's going to unsettle, I definitely want to make sure that it's warm. Once it's in position and I'm happy, I can just gently roll that out and then I can take the photos from here. Don't shoot up the baby's nose. So you want to go just higher. You can, it's also really good to take a side angle and get the cute little legs. So Sandra, can I ask you, does the baby's head stay there? Do, you don't need to support it with a, a support person? It really depends on the baby and it does depend on your setup. Some babies will naturally sink into their fingers. She's not going to sink into her fingers as much, but once they sink into their fingers, they can actually sort of hold that pose or it might even just be a little bit off to the side, okay. which is okay too. Some babies can't hold it very well, and in which case then I would have a support person come through. And then just by gently sort of one finger to the side, which we can Photoshop out later, I can still get that shot. Otherwise, if the baby's not going to hold that pose, it is also very easy just to sort of, again, full support of the head and, and gently bring it round. And then you can just take those sort of nice yeah. side poses as well. Um, I really like this pose. Um, I think it would be um, quite suitable for, um, you know, every baby would be really um, quite comfortable in this pose. Um, my only concern possibly would be that the head is, uh, makes up 25% of the baby's weight. So you just need um, to be mindful that um, the arms and the hands don't change color. They might go a little bit blue or red. Um, and if they do, then just um, you know, alleviate the head for a little while and just change the baby's position. Yeah, so I guess we could do that by just lifting the head slightly, bringing the hand out that's gone a little bit discoloured, red, and um, just sort of take that pressure off from the head. What we want to try and achieve during our flow posing is as many different looks as possible without moving the baby. And the way we're going to do that is we can also add hats, little teddy bears or, or whatever it is to this pose really easily. So you definitely want to make sure that you're not going to tie it too tight um, you don't want to restrict their airways. So generally what I do is I'll just tie it really gently out to the front and then I can sort of just tuck into the side without having to put pressure at all. I really like the idea that you're doing as many, um, taking as many photos, different photos, Sandra, We're using the one um, pose. We have to be very mindful of not overstimulating the baby. If you get a baby that's overstimulated, they're going to be, um, they're going to get very unsettled and their movements are going to become very jerky. They're going to get a little frown between their, um, in their brow and they'll clench their fists. So you really do want a baby that is quite settled. So yeah, it's great that you haven't overhandled her. As photographers, what we want to try to do is definitely get enough images to fill our client gallery, but we also want to do that with as minimal impact to the baby as well. So with this pose in particular, besides adding a beanie, if I just push down on one side just a little bit to transfer the weight over to one side, I can then just tilt the head a little bit. I can gently pull out this arm and I can add in a prop or, or maybe their client's favourite teddy bear or something like that. And I can get this shot as well. This is a great pose to transition into the froggy pose and that is actually what we normally do in our studio. You can follow those in some of our other tutorials 
and definitely make sure that you subscribe to us on YouTube.